Good morning. Praise the Lord. This is a good day to come together and celebrate all that God is doing. Now, let me tell you, Rebecca said a little something about what treasures look like when God starts showing up. This whole time of worship that we've had so far today has been incredible, that we're able to let our hearts be in the hands of our loving God. And what I'd like to talk about today is not just this measure of faith for something that you're in or for a battle, but it's a matter of where is your faith related to the dream that God has placed in front of you. Now, in your life, I imagine there are things that you thought of when you were a kid. If you're a little boy, maybe you thought, I want to be a fireman. If you're a little girl, maybe you wanted to be a nurse or a doctor. All of these things that we do as we're growing up, We have a dream, and then we begin pursuing it in our life. And then somehow, as we step into adulthood, we make excuses that our dreams are not happening. And I'd like to call this out, that there is a measure of faith when we begin to take steps toward our dream. Now, this sermon series is about table topics, taking our seat at the table. And the fact is, when we have our dreams in front of us, that is something that we invite Jesus to sit at the table with us and talk to us about our dreams. I don't know what your experience has been, but sometimes there are words that people have spoken against your dream. And this is just the reality of things that we experience here on the earth. But my question to you now is could you trust him to do his part to line it up? Could you Allow him to carry this dream that's been on your heart. And see, this lesson on faith is how faith is applied in your life, moving forward with all that God has for you. I'd like to begin in Psalm 100, verse 1. And just as was shared in this service, it's so incredible how these things line up. It is a matter of stepping into gratefulness. This is a key to hearing God and for our faith to be ignited is to take a position of gratefulness. Now, I have to tell you personally in my life, I've had the benefit of growing up in a household where we constantly gave thanks. We gave thanks before every meal. We gave thanks for the beauty that we, was surrounding us as we grew up out in the country. And it was just a beautiful thing. My mom is one of the most grateful people that I know. And she was able to pass that on to me, this level of gratefulness. Just hear this in Psalm 100, what it says. Lift up a great shout of joy to Yahweh. Go ahead and do it, everyone, everywhere. Worship Yahweh with gladness. Sing your way into his presence with joy and realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping Yahweh our God, for he is our creator and we belong to him. We are the people of his pleasure. You can pass through the open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving and come give your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. Now these words to me, 
They give life and energy even if I'm looking at a crushed dream. And so it does not matter what your circumstances, you can choose to be in a place of gratefulness. And I'm telling you this because that has been my experience. I've had times in my life where my dreams were sky high and then my experiences brought me down really low. And I've got to tell you, when it comes to the hearts of the people that you love and the decisions that are made, we can go from a very high place to feeling very crushed and very hurt. And the fact is, God takes all of that and we say, God, I am grateful for you. I am grateful for a relationship with you. And do you see in this entire passage, it is built on being in his presence with joy. It is about the depth of relationship with our God that he continually raises us up as we get knocked down in these seasons in our life. He is absolutely amazing. We pass through his open gates with a password of praise, right into his presence with thanksgiving. And now, just as this word has been shared with us, right now we can know that the matter is settled. We ask Jesus about what it is that we're experiencing. And we know that Jesus himself gives us the desires of our hearts. This is a matter of we lay that seed of faith down to Jesus and we say, God, allow it to grow. I trust you with it. I give you that seed. And I allow my faith to be ignited in you. So what's the next step to growing in faith? I'd like to go to Proverbs 25, verse 2. You see, there is so much that God reveals through the spirit of wisdom. We are able to see our faith set on fire as we come into agreement with his wisdom. It says here, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings is revealed by how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. And now if we look into what this is saying, is that God is speaking to us through the world around us if we would only tune in. He's hiding a message to you to encourage you. And I'll tell you what, I have so many testimonies of God doing that. There's a place that I love to go hiking. And as I've gone hiking there, numerous times, it's like going back to the same place but finding new treasures that were hidden there. And after going to this place, I think it's been a dozen times being there, every single time, God just opens up a new treasure every time. And it's glorious because he says, I love you, son. And I give you yet this new treasure. And see, all that I've done when going there to hike is to say, God, I'm just so in wonder with you. And I just spend this time with you to receive all that you have. And then he begins to pour out in this amazing way. 
And you see that seed of faith. I go there not knowing what the adventure is going to look like. And I, I plant that seed of faith. God, what adventure are you leading me on today? And then he shows up and there it is. And I see him. And suddenly now my eyes are open to see the miracles that he's placed in front of me. And even in this last 24 hours, I'm telling you, I have seen multiple miracles happen. And those miracles are not just little things. They are matters of the heart. And I speak as one who has laid it down. And one who has seen God come on my behalf to answer that prayer. You see, all of this works together so beautifully when our journey is about walking it out with God. The next step of faith is really the big one. That we can say it all day long, I have faith for this, but are we taking action on it? I'd like to read in James chapter 2. Now this has come up in our other messages about faith in our table topic series. I'd like to go back here and really see where the gold is. You see, that next step of faith is something where we are called to take action. We are called to make decisions and begin taking steps forward. Let's read here, James 2, beginning in verse 14. My dear brothers and sisters, what good is it if someone claims to have faith but demonstrates no good works to prove it? How could this kind of faith save anyone. For example, if a brother or a sister in the faith is poorly clothed and hungry, and you leave them saying, goodbye, I hope you stay warm and have plenty to eat, but you don't provide them with a coat or even a cup of soup, how good is your faith? So then, faith that doesn't involve action is phony. It's a counterfeit. But someone might object and say, one person has faith and another person has works. Go ahead then and prove to me that you have faith without works and I will show you faith by my works as proof that I believe. You see, all of this passage so far is all about where our faith really is. And see, I lived for many years not even recognizing where the gap was in my faith. Because if someone came to me with a problem, I really had faith for their solution. And I could see it clearly. God, you are giving an amazing measure of your grace that this person in front of me receives everything that you have for them. But somehow, I was blinded to my own gap that God could have the same for me. I don't know if you found yourself in that position. You have faith for other people to receive their blessing, but you don't see it for yourself. And I remember this so clearly. In August of last year, there was a prophetic voice that said, it is time to make a decision. No longer could I sit on a fence and say that I could be half over here and half over there. There was time to make a decision. And once that decision was made, I'm telling you, everything began to cascade. It was miracle after miracle, encounter after encounter, blessing after blessing. Does it mean that chaos ended? 
Absolutely not. It almost seemed like the volume turned up on the chaos at the same time. But what I can stand to tell you is that by taking action and taking steps toward your faith, taking steps toward your dream can mean everything when you make that decision and you lay down that seed of faith with Jesus. And this is where we can take the word that God has placed and we can run with it. You see, matters of the heart are so deep. And if someone comes against a matter of your own heart, we cannot sugarcoat it. It hurts. And the fact is, we take that hurt that we have experienced and we have an opportunity to do something with it. And say, God, even in the midst of the hurt that I have felt, I lay it down. And I say, Jesus, what do you have in exchange for me laying down that hurt and that pain of the dream that was not realized in my life? I'm telling you, the thing that I saw next after laying it down and making that decision was an absolute acceleration toward things that I could only dream of and it became even greater than my greatest dream. I'd like to read also from Ephesians chapter 2. I didn't share this one with you, Andrew, beforehand, but I'm just really seeing it right now. Because when God places his acceleration on our life, it looks so absolutely amazing. It's Ephesians chapter 3, I'm sorry. We're going to begin in verse 14. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect father of every father and child in heaven and on the earth. And I pray that he would unveil to you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. See, this is where the transformation takes place. We take that seed of faith and we lay it down and we say, God, what are you doing with it? What do you have in exchange? And I feel that God is saying, I'm going to unveil to you the unlimited riches of your glory. Do you see how promises begin to come to pass? And now, by verse 17, then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be revealed deep inside you, and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Now, guys, when we were reading that passage about faith being ignited by works and by making a decision, do you now see this is how we exercise that muscle of our faith? You see, we use our faith to say, God, I know the promises that you made to me. And I am holding on to those promises. I know that I heard your voice clearly. And that I'm going to receive the promise. So 
So yesterday, such an amazing story. I was on my way to go somewhere, and God redirected us. And he brought us to a greater place of blessing than I ever could have imagined. And then God just started pouring out blessing upon blessing because this wasn't just some little thing. This is a matter of heart. This is a matter of our future. And when God begins to do that, there is a hope that rises up. Because I saw the miraculous. Imagine this. You're on your way to destination A. And then on the way, God nudges you to destination B. And it just so happens at destination B, he sends you somebody. A friend, out of the blue. And God's love pours out to you. I'm telling you, there is such a setup when our lens is to see how he wishes to bless us. And I stand here today as a testimony of what God can do. Because myself and my fiance Rebecca, we are moving across the country. We drove across the country to get to our new home. And God was with us in every step of that journey. He taught us things that I cannot even possibly put words to yet. But what he did in my heart was solidify How he is there, loving and protecting and lifting up no matter the circumstance. You know, sometimes um, there's a phrase that people have said, I got there by a wing and a prayer. (laughs) And I'll tell you what, that is my testimony. (laughs) stopping several times on that trip to repair the vehicle we were driving (laughs) coming on the last day of the trip still with hundreds of miles to complete and the engine is making an incredible knocking sound that cannot be explained And yet, by a wing and a prayer, we made it to our destination. And then, through one of the BSSM students that day, as they came over to assist us, it was released, I see your journey, and I see that you have made it. You made it. And in that moment, we were so seen by God. Because I'm telling you, I don't even know what's holding that engine together anymore right now. But it's still running. Nobody does that. Would you, would you drive five, 600 miles on an engine that's making a very loud sound? Now, we stopped in. at an auto zone in Bakersfield, California, after already driving two to 300 miles on this engine making this knocking sound, and there was a check engine light. And with that check engine light, it was saying there was a misfire on cylinder five. I know that's kind of technical. But what happened is I'm thinking, that's it. I need to change the spark plugs. And so I grabbed one spark plug. And changed it and started up the truck. The check engine light came off. Praise God. But the knocking was still there. (laughs) 
the amazing thing about this is there in this parking lot, in the hood, <laughs> there were cigarette shops, vape shops, um, yeah, marijuana shop, all these things around us, surrounding us, and here we are in that parking lot changing the spark plugs on the vehicle. And yet, who did God send to us? There was a young man named Joshua. And he was from the Midwest. And he was so kind. I came up to that counter and I said, I, I, just, I just need the right spark plugs to make it. And after I had changed that one plug, I sent in these two lovely ladies to go and get more. Go get seven more spark plugs. We got, eight, we got seven more to change. And then after changing those other seven spark plugs... I started up the truck, and the knock was still there. So I invited Joshua to come and to hear the truck running. And he came and he heard it, and he said, hey, have you checked the oil? And I'm thinking, well, this truck doesn't burn any oil. And I checked it, and it was a bit low. We, add, we put some additive in. And he said, that's probably lifter noise. And as soon as I just had that note that this is lifter noise, I have heard trucks driving around with this noise. And I even said here to my lovely fiance that, you know, about 50% of farm trucks out there have lifter noise. So we're just, let's play the odds. Trucks drive around all day long with lifter noise. So let's go to our destination. What could it hurt? At least the towing bill could be that much less. <laughs> so we continued on, and I'm telling you, by a wing and a prayer, we continued on. And, and the fact is, just knowing what the problem is sometimes gives us the ability to pray into it, to see ourselves through it. And the fact is, I have seen miracles because I don't understand it. And guys, even after all of that happened, after Bakersfield, do you know what else is on the way? Actually, I believe this may have been on the way to Bakersfield. While the truck was making the lifter noise, <laughs> we're driving in the mountains. And as we drive in the mountains, there's something that you have to do to drive well. I'm driving a truck and pulling a car, and so that's a lot of weight. And we've got it loaded up with all of our belongings, as much as we can possibly bring with and now we have gone uphill and we are up in these mountains and now it's time to go down the mountain. And I'm going down the mountain as carefully as I can and I'm using my engine braking. I've, brought, I've dropped it down one gear. And the fact is I'm still having to ride the brakes from time to time. And I don't realize how much I'm riding the brakes. And then we realize it's time to stop for some fuel, and we take the off-ramp, and it is a steep downhill. And I'm telling you, by the grace of God, there was a car coming on that frontage road, and I was on the brakes, and I'm thinking, we need to stop. And I was smelling something. I was smelling the brakes. And when that car came in front of us, I didn't know if I'd be able to stop. And I used all of my weight on the brakes in that moment. And thankfully, we passed without any collision. Now, as we pulled into the gas station, I kid you not, <clears throat> we are smelling something is burning. And we look, and there is literally smoke rolling up from those brakes. <coughs> And the smoke from those brakes was not just a little bit. 
if I would have left it, I think it actually would have burned them completely off of the vehicle. So what I did is I took a bottle of Aquafina and I just showered it with water to cool it down. Now, thankfully, in the midst of all of this, both Rebecca and Amber remained so calm and cool. And there just happened to be a fruit stand here. And they had said in the signs before, if you stop for gas, bring in your receipt and we'll give you some free fruit. Rebecca took me by the hand and walked me into that store and just loved me. And in my heart, I'm thinking, we just need to make it to California. We just need to make it to our new home, but I didn't know what to do. And all that she knew to do was just to lead me to love. And that was what my heart needed. And we just took time to literally cool down. (laughs) I took time to cool down. Let's be real. The fact of the matter, I'm telling you, when I say that God is moving things and that his miracles are happening, that can look like some ordinary things. But oftentimes, God is so behind it. And I can't even wait to see one day in heaven to have these conversations with Jesus to see exactly what he was doing. Because I think he's been having a lot of fun behind the scenes seeing us through to our destination. And guys, all that I've been sharing with you has already been said. Because when the prophetic word was released for 2023, all of these elements are in it. Every single one. You see, this is part of our journey. There is an entire journey through the book of Psalms, beginning in Psalm 55, going up to 68, and it's talking about our past and our call to trust and igniting our faith, keeping our eyes on God, living in the miraculous, pouring out our legacy. In here, it was talking about we have a key and how to live and legacy by making our words count. He's calling us to rise above our circumstances and see it through Papa's eyes. Our eyes are opening up to see the miraculous. And now it's time to step out of the ashes and into victory. Because this place of steadiness and balance is what he's called us to. And you know, one thing and part of my journey is that when I'm going through the process of healing, I'm just being real with you right now, I'm being very vulnerable and sharing this with you, is that when I go through steps of my healing, sometimes I want to skip ahead a few steps. And I've done that. But here's the thing that God has been showing me, is that it is a process to go through it all. To go all the way through it until we come out the other side. And here's what's happening is it's time to step out of the ashes into victory. And that means going all the way through it. And that next part of our prophetic word for this year just really, really excites me because it is a matter of our choice. The choice is ours to step into the miraculous, to allow him to be our God, where to place our focus is all up to us. It's our own decision. That's a beautiful thing. We catch the vision of what God is doing, what he's been doing in our family here. You see, it is such a beautiful, beautiful thing in what, what it is that he's doing. The great part of this is that no longer are we caged birds, but the caged bird is set free. 
And so in all of these things, when we look at the testimonies of what God has done, we say, God, your love has been unfailing. We say, God, we are connected to you in our hearts, and we see what it is that you wish to do in our lives. This greatly encourages me to see such alignment. I had no idea until I pulled this out to see how much of it has actually happened already. God has placed an acceleration on all of our lives as we begin to take steps of faith. And that means sometimes it's really scary. I know some of you right now are in a place where you have begun to take steps and you've begun to make even investments toward those steps and yet there still are some scary parts of the journey to remain but that's okay because the same way that God brought myself and Rebecca and Amber to our destination, I tell you, God is bringing you to yours. God is bringing you to your fulfilled dream. He's taking you to that place where your heart longed for that dream to be fulfilled and you will see it fulfilled in Jesus' name because he is for you and not against you. So today, we have an opportunity to take that next step of faith and to trust that Jesus will carry us. Let's take some time right now to talk to Jesus about it. So if you would stand with me. I'd like to lead you in an encounter with Jesus that we're going to go on a hike together. So you've come to a place to hike and you park your car and there's a bit of a journey to get where you're going. You're walking here with Jesus. And so as you're walking to this place, you notice the beauty of the trees around you. There's there's a stream next to you with beautiful, clear water. You don't know where it comes from, but it's just flowing. And there's such volume in that stream. It doesn't even make sense. And then as you continue on this path, you see in the middle of nowhere, there is a spring. And that spring is, is like a hundred feet wide. And in that spring, there's just this water that continues to bubble up. It doesn't make sense. Where is it coming from? And Jesus, right now, he is saying, it is my love. My love causes that water to flow up out of the ground. And as you continue on your walk with him, you come to another place. It's an even larger spring. And again, there is more water coming up. And it's flowing and flowing. And the water is so clear. You can see all the way to the bottom and it's deep. And then you continue your journey a bit farther. And you come to a place where the trees 
create shade along the bank of this stream. And Jesus wants to just spend some time with you there in front of the rushing water. So right now, I ask for you to take a moment to ask Jesus what he intends to do with your dream. As you spend some time there with Jesus, I invite you to have a conversation with him about what your next step is to take. I invite you to take some of your own time and just talk to Jesus about these things. I'd like to release a prayer before we leave for the day. Jesus, I thank you that you ignite our dreams to see them fulfilled. And I thank you, Lord, that you ignite our faith to lay it down and to see what you will do with it. God, I thank you that we don't have to understand how. We trust you to do it. I thank you, Lord, that you have revealed that relationship is everything. I thank you that you are unveiling the unlimited riches of your glory and your favor. And I thank you, Lord, that you lift each of us up in supernatural strength in our innermost being, that we are filled with your divine might and explosive power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Love you all.